out or find out that that had, you know something that tragic has happened to him was you know kind of unreal to me. You know. At the time, I really didn't believe it just because of you know where his level of skill was at. The fact that you know something like that could happen to somebody, you know that talented. But um, you know it kind of goes to show that you have to you know be careful every day and you know always you know I guess you know be safe. Alright, you want me to like stand here or you want me to stand outside this that way? It started out as any other filming session. We were filming for my 2012 showreel and it just turned out to be a great day of training. I was rolling on concrete, doing gainer folds and a bunch of other stuff that I just didn't think I'd be able to do for a while. Right there. I was living it like it was my last day, and in a way, it was. The night that I found out, I was in the car, going to, I think, Brigantine. I remember, I remember I was working, I was, I was working at a pool at the JCC, the Jewish Community Center in Margate. When I found out about the accident, I was at, I was actually with my family. I don't remember much of my accident, I remember landing the flip, but obviously that didn't happen. My brain came up with a scenario where I landed it, everybody was happy, and that was it, and the next thing I know, I'm lying on the ground, I don't know what's happening, and I can't feel my legs. Uh, I remember Brandon calling me, and I finally picked up the phone, and I was like, what do you want? I was kind of being rude. Um, and he was telling me everything that happened, like, John fell, he was doing parkour, he can't feel his leg. I got a text from Brianna, or Shane, one of the two, saying that John's in the hospital, I kind of freaked out a little bit, although I knew it was about something free running, and I texted, alright, what happened? And they said, we don't know yet, we just know he can't walk. I just didn't believe it. Uh, John was the only person I had trained with for 18 months, and it was crazy. I stayed at Atlantic City uh, Medical Center for six days and I was transferred up to McGee where I spent seven weeks in rehab. It was a really great place and I'm super happy I went there. There's really no other better place in the area that I could have gone. When, when he first told me about free running, I was surprised, but in a, in a good way. Uh, as he got older, I really saw that that he was serious about it. He wasn't just some kid doing backflips off buildings. Like he was, I mean, he was, but you know, he he took it seriously and and he was trying really hard. I got to talking to John online and ended up going to meet him in the hospital. Oh and, you know, really get to know him more. Uh, found out that he was into rules cube puzzles and that he could use his hands and his arms. So figure let him work some of this dexterity. We started talking. Uh, spots in the area, but we never really set up a place to jam. Uh, then he came into the place I was teaching at for a while. Uh, didn't even know, or we didn't even know each other. And uh, he just blew me away with his talent. He was at such a higher level than me, and he'd been training for two years less than me. I started for running back in the summer of 09. I was on the Bethel Middle School track team, and I was looking 
up the article on how to run faster. In a related article, there was a how to do a wall run tutorial. And it ended up being um, a guy from Texas Parkour uh, doing different sorts of vaults and stuff like that. And he immediately thought it was something out of the Matrix. This is an awesome one yet. Here he is showing us how to do it. So I looked up um, the documentaries, Jump London, Jump England. I watched them, I went on Wikipedia articles, watched every video I could get my hands on, and just went out and started jumping on things. I told my best friend at the time, Shane, you know, you gotta watch this video, you know, this guy's swinging on trees and jumping off the buildings and all sorts of cool stuff like that. And it was just, it was beyond anything we'd ever seen. Then as freshman year rolling around the summer before, I started teaching you know, some of the younger kids at my middle school. Uh, Marquez and Nick were the first people on the scene. And I saw he was inspiring. He was inspiring a lot of the younger kids around him and some of his friends. Me and my friends hang out quite a lot. We don't go outside nearly as much, but we hang inside. We play things like Guitar Hero, uh, you know, Mortal Kombat. Uh, video games became a really big part of my life. They already were, but like sort of competitive, like. Invited us, myself and some of the other tracers and leaders in the area to a benefit that was, oh my gosh, like last, last winter? Last winter. And we all went down and I was, I went down with Jamie and Justin Conway. We drove down together and Chris and Brian and Charles had driven down by themselves and I was so happy to have been able to make it. Um, Probably one of the best times with like spending time with the community was being able to meet him and see like how positive he was. Um, the fundraiser for John at the Moose Lodge in Chelsea Heights, and um, at the time we were actually you know going through reamping the movement lab and you know making a lot of changes. So we didn't have like a ton of money, but we wanted to give something. So when we came out, um, we tried to you know give as much as we could and you know donate some to help him you know get along as far as you know accommodations go and we um we also tried to promote it as much as we could so we um did youtube videos and you know i posted on my facebook page and tried to get attention for people to come out and do it and we came we came with a relatively large group to you know support him during the summer i attended an event called life rolls on which is an event that was started by jesse belauer he's a surfer and he had an accident and now he's a quadriplegic, you know, he doesn't have use of his um, fingers to a certain extent and whatnot. And he just has such an inspirational story. Uh, I watched his DVD and went to the event. And there are about, I want to say, 35 people that went surfing. And there's about 250 or so volunteers, which was amazing. Just being surrounded by people that just cared and honestly wanted to help was really, really awesome. Uh, and I'd never gone surfing before my accident, so even though I was laying down, just to sort of be on this giant surfboard and catch some waves it was uh, was pretty cool. Um, overall, though, John's you know optimism throughout the entire experience has been unreal. It's been you know inspiring to me. I, I have a lot of people that come to me and tell me like from Ninja Warrior, like I inspired them to do this or you know to do that or be more fit or you know to, you know, maybe quit drinking or quit, quit smoking or, you know, do something positive with their life. And, you know, for me, John has been that guy who's been, like, an inspiration to me to whenever things get tough, it's, you got to stay optimistic. Just his spirits has been incredible and how he's dealt with the situation is unreal. And, you know, if I could be half as, you know, enthusiastic as he, had, as he is, I, I'd be pretty happy with myself. No more. And that.
it's a ball game.